Hi everyone, Aiden here with eTrailer.com. Today we're taking a look at the Thule Hitching Post Pro here on our 2018 Kia Sedona. Now the Hitching Post Pro is a hanging style bike rack capable of holding up to four bikes, each up to 35 pounds. Because it is a hanging style rack, we do want to avoid carbon frame bikes because that will damage the frame, having it hang by the frame. And with alternative frame bikes and kids bikes, we do probably want to pick up a bike adapter bar to make sure that it fits and hangs properly from the rack. With those things in mind though, we can check out how it actually holds the bike. We've got two straps on the top holding the frame down into these pretty deep cradles. And then a third point of contact on the seat post. That's gonna be our anti-sway, limiting that side to side movement. You can see we do still get some movement but compared to some without it, and even some with that sway cradle, this is gonna work really well to limit bike to bike contact. Now I'm actually gonna get the bike removed by just pulling on the straps here and releasing them from those tabs, just like that. And then we can just lift it up and away. And you can see the cradles there a little bit better. Compared to a lot of other options for hanging style racks, I like how deep they are because it kind of gets a good hold on the frame. And with those channels there, we've got good paths for our brake cable so nothing gets pinched. And from here, we can actually show you the tilting feature. This is gonna give us hatch access to our vehicle. We'll come down to the bottom here where we've got a pin and retaining clip near this loop for a cable lock. Once that's removed, it'll just tilt down. You can see pretty far. And this is why we actually wanna unload the bikes first because those bikes will hit the ground especially with how low this sits. From here, we can actually go ahead and change our shoes before or after a ride if we needed to, or just get something out of the back. I'll get this all closed up and we can put it back into place just by reinserting that pin and clip. And we can actually check out some measurements too, because this is gonna stick out a fair bit from your vehicle and we wanna see how much. At the back end here, we're going to be adding about 38 inches to the back of your van. That's not too bad, but it does add a significant amount. We can actually reduce that by taking this pin and retaining clip out up top, folding those arms down, and then reinserting that with the newly aligned holes. So if we want to leave this bike rack in the hitch between rides, we don't want to fully take it out. We can. We can save some space only sticking out now about 15 inches. So it's a lot more manageable there. It doesn't come close to the vehicle at all. So I don't think you'll have any worries about vehicle contact. And then it is a straight shank. So our ground clearance is only gonna be about nine inches. Although it does sit pretty close to the vehicle. I don't think we'll have any issues making contact here. Just watch out for those steep driveways and hills when you have your bikes loaded. At the hitch, we can work with an inch and a quarter or a two inch by two inch hitch like we have here with the included adapter sleeve. And it does come with an anti-rattle bolt, keeping things solid and secure in the hitch. And overall, it's a pretty solid rack, it's pretty basic, and it's gonna fit on the Sedona pretty well. My personal recommendation would be to check out the Kurt Premium. That's gonna work better with kids' bikes right out of the box, which I think is a better fit for your van here. And for me, it sits up a little bit higher off the ground, so it gets some more ground clearance between your bikes and the ground. So I just think it's an overall better fit for the Sedona. Thanks for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then, onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.